Hello, I'm Atubo Jordan. I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Can we pray? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for this moment. As we yield ourselves to your truth, we receive our daily bread today. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, because you will not hold back anything that is profitable to us. But freely we receive of you and freely we give out. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, yesterday we finished 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So today we are stepping into chapter 13. Now, this is the love chapter, not the romantic chapter, the love chapter. Praise God. So what's the difference? You will know as we go on. Now, let's start from verse 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I hope you are there now. All right, now he says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. Oh, is it possible to speak in the tongues of men? Now, what's he saying? He's saying, Though I speak every kind of language, that's the tongues of men. If I can speak all kinds of languages, see. And then I speak all kinds of tongues of angels. Now, what, what does it mean tongues of angels? Now, when you begin to speak the spiritual language, those are the tongues of angels. See, why is it called tongues of angels? Yes, because it is the Spirit that is giving the utterance. And then this Holy Spirit will only give you utterance with the same um, sound from heaven. That's how it works. Do you understand what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit will give you utterance from the same sound of heaven. So that's why he called it the tongues of angels. Praise God. Then he says, if I, if I do these and have not charity, Old King James will say love. New King James says, sorry, New King James says love. Old King James says charity. Praise God. Says, I am become a sounding brass and a tickling cymbal. You know what that means? I'm just making noise. If I speak with tongues of men, I can go to Italy and speak Latin. I can go to um, Spain and speak uh, Espanol, Espanol. I can go to, you know, wherever, just speak their language. Now, whether I've learned it or by the Spirit, I can speak their language. Now, he says, if I can do all that, and then when you hear me pray in tongues here, you, it will be like, oh, I mean, you know there are some tongues you hear, you just say, this, this one is not normal tongues. You know, you know like we, 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 you know, we, we, we share. You say, man, those tongues are the deepest heavenly tongues. Praise <laughs> God. If I do all that and there's no love in my heart, I'm just making noise. You know, the same way someone is playing a drum, you just, as he beats, the rolls the drum. And say, oh, wow, that's where it ends. It, it has no meaning. You know, that's what it says. Now, why is he saying that? Our tongues ought to carry a meaning. Every sound that comes out of our mouth ought to carry a meaning. It can only carry a meaning when it's coming out from the place of love. Have you ever been there when someone is talking to you and you know that the person is not speaking from their heart, they are just speaking from their head? Sometimes you know. You're, you're seeking advice from someone. The person just says, and then you're like, sorry, sorry. Did you really understand what I was saying? See, why? Because you felt the person didn't speak from their hearts. No, they didn't speak from the place of understanding. They're just telling you something to put you away. You know, just like give him an answer, let him go. Praise God. And you know, we don't like that. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mystery, that's word of knowledge, word of wisdom now. Well, we say understanding the mysteries of God. Now it says, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. It doesn't make any difference. Why? Because love is everything. Now, now watch this. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Did you see that? Is it possible for someone to give his body to be burned without love in his heart? Oh, yes. Some people just want to look like a superhero. So they take certain risks, but truly no love 
in their heart when you ask them why are you doing what you're doing they will tell you all sort of things but there is no love in your heart you know sometimes you think how can someone give his body to be burnt without love oh yes there are <laughs> praise god there are now watch this it says it says charity suffered long and it's kind note that he says love suffers long you know those it stays praise god think about it love stays this. Love is not a two minutes thing. Love is not a one hour thing. Love is not a one week thing. You know, I love you so much. I love you so much. After one week, ah, I don't think I love you again. You, you, you never loved the person in the first place. You knew. They say, I, I used to love that person, but I stopped loving the person when I discovered you never loved the person. He says, so what was that? Infatuation. There's infatuation. Now, infatuation doesn't even have to do with anything romantic. You see, it's not always the time. See, infatuation can just be in the things you like. So you're, you're swept away by, by your likeness for this thing for the moment. And after a while, you, you can, after a while, you, you begin to realize that it's just, you know, not, not, uh, you know how it is. Not, not that the person or most times, see, actually, you, you don't love people. Hey, sorry, you don't love things. You only love people. Did, did, should I say that again? We don't love things. We love people. See, we love God and we love people. Why do I say we don't love things? No, we enjoy things. So say, ah, I love that food. No, you don't love that food. Praise God. You enjoy that food. Praise God. I love that car. You don't love the car. You enjoy the car. Now that's something you need to understand. Why am I saying this? Because you love you know we just use words anyhow without the meaning that's why we behave anyhow see he says now he begins to, he begins to define what love is he begins to describe the character of love so first of all he says love suffers long it stays thank you lord jesus and it's kind Love or charity, envy, no, it doesn't envy. Now, why, why, why do people envy? They envy because they feel a sense of lack in them. A, a sense of, of, of incompleteness in them. See? But love has everything. Oh, Lord Jesus. So, when love has everything, it doesn't envy. All right. It says, charity or love, vouched it not itself, is not puffed up. It's not, if, you know, you know, you know how some people say, if, if not that I love you, I know what I would have done. If not that I love you, it says, charity doesn't speak like that. It doesn't. Why? Because it's sacrificial. Watch this now. It says, it says, do not behave itself unseemingly. Don't let someone tell you, you know, he who wants to fornicate with you. Say, oh, it's because I love you so much. You know, I can't do without you. I love you so much. And all he's trying to do is to get his hands all around you. And, and, hey, hey, remind the person, love doesn't behave itself unseemingly. Praise <laughs> God. Doesn't do that. So this is not love right now. That is speaking. No, no, no. Praise God. So he says, seek it not her own. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Love is not always insisting on his own. Let me read this from, from another translation. Maybe, oh, look at the Amplified Classic. He says, doesn't insist on his own rights. Or, that's, that's reading, let me read from verse 5. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated it with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly and does not act unbecomingly. Love, that's God's love for us, does not insist on its own right or its own way. Did you see that? Love doesn't is insist on its own right. Oh, I am right. I'm the one that is right in this day. You know, sometimes you, you, you know, I, 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 I told you the Lord has been teaching me some things lately. 
and things he wants me to share with you. And we are going to be looking at it when we're done with this um, um, book of 1 Corinthians. We're going to really be talking about behavior. And we'll title it something along, along that line. Now, he says, love doesn't is insist on its own rights or its own way. It has to be done my way. Love doesn't do that. You know the same thing? Is it because now, now, when he begins to talk about love, of course, we should know by now that he's talking about God because God is love. See? God is love. So when he's saying love doesn't do this, he's saying God doesn't do this. Now that's simply what he's saying. So then he says, For it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. Did you see that? What does it mean take to account evil that is done to it? You want to do something for that person? Ah, I won't. Why? Three years ago, you know, the, the, this person did me this evil. Ah, I just remember now. I won't, I won't help the person. You're taking account. What if God have said you should help that person? Now, that's why you see... The Bible says, as many as, as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Now, what does that mean? Everything you do should be motivated by the Spirit of God. You should know that you are being led by the Spirit of God. Praise God. Now, that's one thing you should know. So, so... If someone comes to you, for example, and seeking help, it doesn't matter what that person has done to you before. You, your job is to say, Lord, what do you think about this request this person is? If the Lord said, do it, then go ahead and do it. Don't start thinking, but Lord, no, 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 no. The one who's saying do it, he's wiser than everyone. He's wiser than the person. He's wiser than you. See? So don't take to account the wrong that was done to you. Or don't even take to account the good that was done to you. Oh, well, this person really helped me, so I need to help the person back. That may be wrong at that moment. The heart is right, but the action may be wrong for that moment. So let's go further now. He says, it does not, it does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness. It doesn't. Oh, my side won, my, my person won against that person. Oh, way, wow. No, 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 no. It doesn't. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But rejoice is when right and truth prevail. See, if you know the difference to this two, you're arguing a case over somebody. Maybe you're dragging a land or something, and then you win. And then what, why, why are you rejoicing? Are you rejoicing because you won? Or I rejoice in that finally truth has, has prevailed in that circumstance. See? You know, sometimes people win cases legally, but we know that morally they ought not to win that case. So when they win case based on technical agreement, and people begin to rejoice and say, hey, you see, you're rejoicing for the wrong reason. Truth did not prevail in that situation. You know that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. This is powerful. Praise God. He says, love bears. See? Verse 7 says, bear it, love bear it all things. Now, the Amplified says, it bears up under anything and everything that comes. I can handle it. That's the attitude of love. I can handle it. Now that's why the Bible says nothing can be done against the truth. Why? Because God is love and he can handle anything. That's why he's able to handle you with all, with all the nonsense, the headache you give to people. God is still able to handle you. Why? Because God is love. Praise God. He says, bears under everything and everything. And that comes is ever ready to believe the best of every person. It hopes are faithless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our time is up for today. But did you get what I just read to you? That's what love is. 
And that's why you need to understand that he is talking about God here. And I, now I'm going to talk to you tomorrow about how do we connect this to ourselves. Praise God. Listen, step out today and have a wonderful day. And come back with a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.